Hey guys, welcome back to another 3D printing video. And in this video, we have the Creality LD002H. So this is a resin printer, and it's quite interesting to see how well Creality does in this space because they do really good on their FDM printers like the Ender 3. So in this video, we're gonna unbox it, set it up, and do some prints. All right, so let's get started. All right, so this is the box that the printer comes in. We can see a little picture here of what it looks like. Here we have the dimensions of the box in centimeters. And on the shipping label, it says two kilograms, which is about five pounds. It might be a bit heavier. So let's go ahead and open this thing up. So I cut the tape on the top, and then I'm just gonna flip it over and pull the box up. And sure enough, the printer is upside down. So with these resin printers, you might be better off just opening from the bottom and then pulling the box up. So on the very top, we have extra release film and it has little steps here on how to replace it. So this is the clear plastic film that's in the tub that holds the resin. Looks like we have all of our accessories and manual in this bag. So here's our user manual, pretty nice and about what is expected for Creality. Very well laid out and good information. And here are all the specs of the printer. We also get a warranty card and how to contact the company. So we do get a little spatula that is sharpened, a little brush, and this is to clean off the parts and the models. It's actually quite helpful. Also a plastic spatula, and this is great for removing the models off the platform without scratching it. We also get, it looks like about five strain filters, a couple Allen wrenches, and it appears to be a USB thumb drive. And this is what you're gonna use to bring in the files to the printer. Also on the top, we have the power cord. All right, so let's go ahead and take the top form off. Got some side protection. Just raise it out. It is in a plastic bag. And now we can see a little better what it looks like. So we have a cover and it's a complete solid piece that's tinted like this orangey red color. I definitely like the touch of the branding here. Very nice. We have our build plate and it is tapered on each side, which is really nice because it helps the resin drain off a lot easier. And the bottom looks like is exposed aluminum that's been treated with some scuff marks to stick better. Very nice. So everything is metal. It feels really good quality. So we got lots of foam around the printer. You guys can see how much foam that is. It is well protected. And that's what it looks like. I'm gonna tilt it over here a little bit so you guys can see. But yeah, we got a pretty deep tub here. And there's some nice details I'm seeing that I'm definitely liking. Got a little fan here, a linear rail bearing. So that's very nice, should be very stable. And everything is metal that can be metal. So that's definitely a huge plus there. So yeah, feels very solid and just a nice build. For the next part, I wanna take off this tub so we can look at it a little closer. And I'm gonna spin the coupler here by hand and we're gonna raise this up a bit. So there are two knobs, one on each side. Okay, so it looks like it's like a long bolt, but it doesn't come out. Okay, so they're not made to come out because they're not threaded here, solid, and then on the bottom they got some threads. But yeah, so here we have the tub, and it's also known as the VAT, V-A-T, and this is where the resin is held. And what's interesting about this one is that there are some really interesting marks here and kind of like steps. And I'm guessing this is for gauging how much resin you have in there, which is kind of interesting. So looking here on the bottom, we can see that there's bolts around here and that just compresses this film. And this thing is really tight. It literally plays like a drum pretty much so. And it has to be that tight because the model actually prints through this. Every time it pulls it up, it's gotta unstick from it, so. But yeah, it's all aluminum and pretty nice design. Now, if we look on the top here, this is where our screen is. And there's actually a protector over it that we do need to peel. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that. 
and there's a couple little borders here on each side and also a little indention around so the tub lines up really easily you guys can see we're using a coupler with a lead screw and the lead screw is extremely greased with some black grease so it's quite heavy on there um, we have a optical style sensor here the fan here and I think this is to help reduce the smell not too sure if there's a carbon filter but there might be one but yeah everything is built very nicely and our build plate just simply slides over onto this bracket and then this knob tightens up so let's take a closer look here starting from the top like I mentioned earlier everything is metal very nice linear rail everything's quite heavy duty and metal here so that's really nice to see very solid good connection no wobbling or anything strange very solid so looking to the front we have a pretty nice size LCD screen there's a protector let's go ahead and pull that off we got the on and off power button here in the front actually quite satisfying to push it very nice going to the right side we just have venting holes here going to the left side of the printer this is where we're going to find our usb port and that's where we're going to be plugging in that thumb drive and also quite interestingly enough here we have some kind of door so i think we should pop this open and see what's inside here in a second looking at the back of the printer so here we have all of our parameters model number and our build size which is 130 by 82 by 160 tall not too large but about standard for this size resin printer and the machine size overall draws up to 72 watts of power and weighs 6.5 kilograms so yeah that shipping label was way off and as we go down this is where we're going to be plugging in our power cord and now we're looking at the bottom of the printer we can see we have a pretty nice size fan here with a heatsink behind there that it cools off and there are pretty nice squishy rubber feet on each corner so i am quite curious to see what's under this lid so let's go ahead and take these two bolts out all right so this thing just slides up and moves out of the way so i don't know if you guys be able to see too well but this is where our main board is and we do have an arm processor there yeah it looks like everything is pretty nicely organized in there and professionally assembled and maybe you guys can see that we do have a funnel type cone that goes down to the bottom and, and that's where the ultraviolets are and so what it appears to me is that it's using a smaller array of uv lights that go in that funnel and they spread out over the whole lcd so all right so i'm going to put this lid back on and then we'll stand it up plug the cord in power it on and level the build platform all right so i got the power cord connected in the back so let's go ahead and push the power button and it does boot up looks like it, and there it goes and the fan came on on the bottom and so far it's very quiet so that is a plus now looking at this ui i'm noticing that everything is in chinese looks like now let's see if we can figure out where to change that this might be a little tricky okay here we go so i went into the middle one here and then right here it says en confirm and there we go now we're in english so what we need to do next is a level this platform to the lcd and so what you're going to need is some kind of piece of paper i'm just going to use this after sales card here it might be a little thicker but with my experience being a little bit more higher is better than too low because it just creates an elephant foot if it's too low so i'm just going to use this card since it's included and probably will work great so before we do anything else we need to loosen the four bolts and the reason we need to do this is because there is a little bit of play here in it where it can move up and down and you guys can see when i loosen it it has a little bit of play back and forth and then up and down so so now we can go to tools and go to manual and click on home so I'll grab this little card and we'll stick it underneath the build plate and so now we have a nice gap in between the screen and the build platform so what i found if we put a little slight pressure around the whole thing and then tighten the bolts works best so i'm just tightening them up in a crisscross pattern so from the back to the front here and then from the back to the front there all right so once you tighten that up you should have a pretty good and even drag all around the build plate so you can check it by just kind of moving around so if it's pretty close it's probably going to be good enough but if you have to go back and adjust it wherever it needs to go so the flatter you get it the more accurate it'll be when you start printing all right so now we can bring up the z-axis grab our tub and it slides in there really easily so there's no hunting around for where it goes it just kind of sits in where it's supposed to be so let's go back here and click on clean vat that should turn on the uv lights and we can check to make sure they work so let's go ahead and click that and it's going to run for 15 seconds you can adjust it here so let's click next and there it goes 
And I don't know if you guys can tell on the camera, probably not, but if you look, you can kind of see the funnel and all the lights are right in the middle of it. And all around is the funnel itself. You can kind of see it. And there's four LED beads. All right, well, that's good. So everything appears to be working. So this was our tools menu that we saw where we leveled the bed. Then we got calibration here. And this looks like it projects some kind of, okay, so like a box to test, make sure the LCD screen's working. And you guys can see the outline there. So that's a test for the LCD screen. And here we can set the Z axis offset if you needed to, but I had plenty of play on mine up or down on this thing. So if you do need to adjust that, you can do that there. And then we got a stop here to stop it from doing anything. And then the clean vat we saw just a second ago. Then we got systems, about, so the name and then some printer information. The volume, so here you can turn on and off the sounds. If you don't want it to beep while it's doing stuff, you can turn it off. So I guess I'll leave it on. And then the language that we changed and service. And this is how to contact the company to have it right here on the screen. So yeah, pretty basic stuff. And that's the great thing about resin printers is they're quite simple and easy to use. So if you're someone that's never used a resin printer, it's much simpler than you think. The bigger part of it is just the safety aspect and also the post-processing after you print the model. So let's go ahead and grab our thumb drive and we're gonna stick it here on the side and it does light up looks like. So now we can click on this print button and sure enough, it looks like we do have a couple test files in there. Looks like an Eiffel Tower and a sphere of some sort. So when you buy this printer, there's no resin included with it. So you're gonna have to buy something on the side and pretty much anything will work. So here I have a bottle and the most important part is the 405 nanometer wavelength. They're all like that. So if you just search for resin, let's say on Amazon, you're gonna find all kinds of different brands and I'm sure Creality has their own brands too. So I'm gonna leave links in the description for the ones I always use it. So this is a gray color and it's great for showing detail in the print. Now, one thing you absolutely need to know about resin printing is that you have to have a ventilated room. Anywhere where the fumes can escape the area and not, you know, concentrate and saturate because if you breathe too much of this stuff it can really affect you in the long run and also when handling resin you want to wear rubber gloves i'm kind of surprised that creality didn't include a mask or any rubber gloves because those are quite essential for dealing with resin printers but technically we all should have masks so yeah i just want you to know if you're new to resin printing you need to take the precautions to keep yourself safe so since we're just pouring the resin in, we don't need gloves for that. When we do start pulling the models off, we're definitely gonna need them and cleaning them, stuff like that. So, so yeah, we're just gonna simply fill the tub with resin. And you guys can see the gray that I got there. It's pretty nice. So I'm gonna go ahead and put all of it in it. I don't have that much in there. All right, so let's go ahead and print that sphere that we saw earlier. So it's in the model folder. So when we click on it, we can see the preview of what we're going to be printing. So it looks like we can delete the file, start the file, and then just go back to the folder. So, all right, so let's go ahead and start it. And there it goes. So our build platform is going to lower down. And there it goes. And it started our first layer. So we can see what the first layer looks like here in the preview. So yeah guys, you can see here the layout. So here we have the preview, the percentage that it's at right now, which is 1%. Below that we have the file name, and then underneath that, the time that it's gonna take to print, so almost four hours. The time that passed, which is three minutes. And then the layer it's on out of 1,293. And on the side we have three hot buttons, stop, pause, and then options. So in the options here, we can control the bottom layer. So I guess they got that misspelled. So on the first eight layers, it's gonna be at 12 seconds. And then after that, it's gonna be two seconds. And that's the exposure offset. And so to adjust it, you just click on the number and then you can change it here with the pad. So we're just gonna leave everything the way it is and you can change any of these things by clicking on them. So yeah, you can adjust it if you need to tweak it a bit. So yeah guys, you can see it's going up and down. So it's on layer 17 right now. So it just holds the exposure for only two seconds. One, two, and it should be going up here. And there it goes. So yeah, pretty quick on the layers. Definitely quicker than other models that I've seen. So we'll see how the first print comes out. So I want you guys to hear how loud it is. I'm gonna bring the microphone in. So yeah, it's quite quiet, even with a fan being here and the motor itself seems very quiet also. 
So I would say the loudest part of the printer is that fan on the bottom. So as far as the sound goes, I would say it's pretty quiet with just a fan hum. So definitely not a disturbance. All right, so let's put the lid on the machine. And this is gonna not only help it with blocking UV rays coming in, but also with the smell. And I definitely like this lid design much better than others that have pieces or whatnot else. It seals really good because it's all a solid piece up here. And it's just a more sturdier, nicer design. And also I'm noticing these touches here on the side, they have little angles, flat spots on each corner. That's kind of nice. So I took off the cap because I want to try a feature that I feel like is very important, and that is the pause. So whenever you start printing, especially if you're new to resin printing, or you're just trying out new settings, and you're not sure if your model is printing or not, because by the time it gets past this huge lip here, it could be, you know, halfway or more, depending on what you're printing, before you can even see it. So when we push the pause button, hopefully it'll raise up high enough above the tub where we can see the model. And that's one way to see if it's stuck on there or not. So we're on layer 127, so you can see we have a lot more layers to go. So let's go ahead and click the pause, and we're going to see if the build plate raises up higher. Okay, so it is raising, and yeah, so far it looks like it's going up pretty high. And you guys can see there that we can see our model, and it looks like it's stuck to the platform, and everything is good. So if you start printing and after about 20, 30, 40 layers, you can pause this and see if everything's okay or not. So you're not going to waste an hour or two before you can even see it. So yeah, this could be very helpful, especially if you're getting started or you got a new printer and you're not sure how well your resin works and if it's sticking. But once you do enough models and they stick just fine, you know, you're not going to really care. You're just going to start it and forget about it. All right, so let's continue it and it's just going to go back down. And it simply just resumes where it left off. And it looks like we're 10% done and have 4 hours and 44 minutes left. So yeah, quite a while still. Alright, so our first print is done and it took 5 hours and 16 minutes. So that took a little longer than I thought. So let's click confirm here. Open the cover. Now as you guys can see, I'm wearing my gloves and this is quite important because you don't want to touch the resin. And again, make sure you're in a well ventilated area. And also wearing a mask can help with some of the small particles and fumes. So if you're going to do resin printing, you're going to need some kind of sheet to process the model and definitely plenty of alcohol. So this one's actually 91%, but you know, any alcohol would do. The higher the percentage, the better. So we'll also grab our spatulas and our little brush here. So I'll put this tray in front of the printer so you guys can hopefully see her. So yeah, all we gotta do now is cut the model loose by loosening this wing nut here. Slide it out, and this is what it looks like. So it actually looks like some kind of bowl or something. So I'm gonna set it down in the tray, grab our little spatula that's sharpened. We're gonna try to knock it off here. Okay, so it's stuck on there really well. Probably a little more than I would like. And it's coming off though. Once you get it under there a bit, it'll go quite easy after that. So and there it goes, slides right off. So yeah, that stuck very well. So because we're going to continue to print, I'm just going to put this right back on and we're ready to print our next model. Now, if you were finished printing, you would simply just wash the bill plate and then drain the tub of resin using a filter back into the container and then wash the tub with the alcohol. And that's pretty much the whole cleaning process. So, you know, it is a little bit involved and takes some cleaning, but the main part is just the smells from the alcohol and the resin that will really get you. The alcohol definitely evaporates quick and it gets quite strong. So ventilation is very important. So yeah, now we're just going to clean this model off with the alcohol by just spraying some on it. And you guys can see we do have supports. Usually you want to take that off early before the model cures because later it's going to harden up and it's going to be a lot harder to remove those. And we're going to put some alcohol inside of it. This is like a bowl. So this is where our brush comes in and it's very handy because you can dip it into the alcohol and then rub it on the model. And usually the little bristles can really rub off everything you don't want. So once you clean it really good, I like to use a microfiber towel to kind of soak up all of the extra resin and alcohol. Now at this stage of the model, it's really soft. So try not to push too hard on it or scratch it before it cures. All right, so that looks pretty good and it should dry up nicely. And I'm gonna leave the supports on because I feel like if I try to take them off, I'll probably break the model. 
But the best way to do that is use some kind of cutters and cut them away as you go. And so once it's dried from the alcohol, so what you want to do is you want to take it outside and put it in the sun or just maybe even in the shade and UV light will cure it. Now you could cure it at home if you did have some UV light so you can just shine it at this and you know rotate it a little bit here and there and that will cure it also. So, but the sun does a great job. Alright so we got one model done. Let's go ahead and start the other one that was included and I think that was the Eiffel Tower. So we'll see how that turns out. This model is actually quite detailed and we'll be able to see how well the details come out. All right, and there we go. So it started our next model. And you guys can see we have still plenty of resin in there to continue printing. So I'm going to go ahead and print out a few other models after this one, and we'll take a closer look at it. So before we check out the models, let's go ahead and see what we have on the thumb drive. So I got it open here. So we got a file called installing, and that's a PDF of the manual software. And we have some G2 box information and also installation for Mac, it looks like, and also Windows. And we do have a PDF guiding us a little bit here through the installation, which I want to get back to here in a second. Then we got troubleshooting PDFs. We got a model folder here, and this is the sphere and the Eiffel Towers that are included. And also a folder with a video of the, I guess, unboxing. So the thing that's quite interesting, if we go to this G2Box PDF, here it kind of shows you how to use and install the software. But the thing that's a little strange is the parameters. Let's see if I can get to them. They go here in pretty good detail of how to even do supports and all that. But here we get to the printing process. And you guys can see that they actually have the wrong information is what it looks like showing us here the parameters. And I couldn't find anything related to of what the parameters should be. And this is the manual here. In any case, I did have a little bit of trouble trying to figure out what was going on. Let's go ahead and open up the G2 box, which, you know, I already have it installed in my computer. And if you don't have it, you'll install it. And it's quite basic to use if you used any kind of slicer before. You have all your main controls here. Uh, let's go ahead and throw something in there real quick. Uh, let's just say this astronaut here. Now the part that's kind of important here, if we go over here and click on settings, we can see the correct resolution parameter. So it's 1620 by 2560. Now because I didn't download the included G2 box on the thumb drive, it had the X resolution as 1440 and that's not correct and it's not going to work. So, And also this is the bed size right here which is 82 by 130 by 160. And again, under print here, this is what I ended up doing. And I don't know if this is completely right, but I went between a few settings and this is what I ended up staying with. I think this bottom exposure time could be a little bit shorter. I would say eight to 10 seconds would be better. Change it to 10, I guess. But exposure time on two seconds seemed to do pretty well. So you can go up a little, maybe three, four, or down to one and see how that works out for you. And then again here with the bottom lift speed and lifting speed and retract speed, I ended up with these settings here. Now I think these could be quite a bit faster if you wanted to save more time. And then the rest is pretty normal. And here you can choose the anti-aliasing. To be honest, I printed a few models with it on and off. Couldn't really tell a difference. Now that might be just because of the type of model I was printing. The idea here is that if you choose the anti-aliasing, it's gonna give you a smoother surface. So I'm not gonna get into how to use Chitty Box and all that, but, but I do wanna cover the hollow part. And there's a hot button up here. If you click on it, it asks you what you want the wall thickness to be. And then you just click start on that and it's gonna process it. And then it's going to give you a little preview of showing how it's hollowed out. So you can make the wall thicker or thinner depending on the model. And next to that we have dig hole. And that's for, you know, if you need to make a hole, let's say on top of his helmet, to drain out as it's printing, this is how you do it. And you can control how large it is in diameter and depth. The other part I wanted to mention that's quite important is after you slice your model. And here it kind of gives us a preview here of what every layer will look like on the screen printing. I'm going to click on save. And the part that's important is to choose this format here, which is called .ctb. So you can see they have quite a few different formats. Now I'm not sure if other ones will work, but this one seemed to work best. And the files that came with the printer also had the .ctb file name in them. After you do that, you name it what you want and then save it. And you can save it straight to your thumb drive or to your desktop and then use it from there. So I quickly wanted to mention these things, so hopefully that helps someone.
all right guys so here we are outside and you're looking at all the prints that i printed now just to be upfront, some of these prints didn't turn out all that great and it was mostly user error but yeah with that said let's go ahead and look at the first print we printed which is this bowl that came with the printer and it turned out really good we can see that there's little pores on the side here you can kind of see through it and it actually turned out really nice and kind of shows that our surfaces are really smooth and we're getting really nice resolution now the other model that was on the card was this Eiffel Tower and, and this also turned out pretty good but we can see here on the top that our railing kind of melted away and that might have been my fault because post processing is a little bit tricky if you haven't had enough experience with the resin printing. So you have to be really careful of how much you rub them and clean them because that could potentially ruin some of the finer details. But as far as the tower goes it turned out really nice. There's lots of detail. So this printer definitely does a great job. Now if we go up here a little higher up, you guys maybe can see that we don't have much light that goes through. And I'm not sure if it's maybe my resin or just the settings, but it's printing a little thicker. And so some of the more finer details are covered up a bit. And I'm sure that can be fine tuned in the settings. And another thing to note about this printer is that because it's using the new monochrome screens, I notice it's a little bit different of how the prints come out. Because they're printed much faster, it does seem to affect the print, or at least what I I can tell a bit and the way it comes out so the next prints I want to show you because I'm not too proud of these is the spaceship and I like to print this spaceship in spiralized mode in FDM printer so I decided to go ahead and print it here but I had a little bit of issue first of all one of the legs lifted here from the plate so that's kind of interesting and then the rest of it is mostly me post-processing it the wrong way and the white haze that you see all over it that is basically alcohol evaporating too quickly off the model and ruining it so what I did with this is I put it in the Sun pretty quickly after I printed it and that was a mistake what you want to do first is let the model dry up a bit in the shade somewhere and then take it out in the Sun once all of the alcohol and whatever is left and it starts curing a bit that's when it's good to go in the sun after that. Also this model was hollowed out in the slicer and I have some holes here that I punched through for the resin to come out and just so it can cure inside. But as far as quality concerned, it seems spot on. So let's go ahead and check out the space guy. Now this one I also messed it up and mostly around these areas here where I rubbed it too hard and kind of made this weird looking I guess smears on the model. That was definitely my fault. But if we look down here at his shoes where you know I didn't mess up anything, we can see how nice those layers are sitting. Maybe zoom in a bit here. And you can kind of see the layers there. There are really nice transitions between the layers. As far as resolution goes, this thing is pretty awesome. Well, not much to see here since it's all messed up. This model is also hollowed out and I made a hole here so, you know, it could breathe and all the resin could cure. But yeah, if we look at the very top, we can see how nice the layers are sitting. So I have no doubt that this printer is very good at what it does. And we can tell here where the mask is not messed up. It's also very nice. So I also had some clear resin that I printed a few items here. So they kind of turned a little bit yellow once they cure. But here we have this lizard looking thing with a bunch of holes in it. And you guys can see it turned out really nice. And on the face here, we got pretty smooth layering. And this is what resin printers are really good at. These kind of things that would be really hard to print on something like a FDM printer. So here I have a couple of rings that were also printed in the clear and they turned out pretty good also. But yeah, printing rings and stuff is also a strong point for the resin printer. For the last clear print, I made this neuron thing, whatever it is, and it turned out really nice. So I used one of the flat spots here to stick to the bed and then printed out the rest of it. And this really shows the strength of a resin printer because this would be very hard to print on any other kind of machine and it never looked this good. So yeah, for complicated shapes like this, resin printer definitely beats everything. Alright so we got a few more smaller models like this bolt and nut and unfortunately it doesn't actually go together or it doesn't screw together which is kind of unfortunate. I was hoping it was gonna work but again like I said earlier it's making everything a lot thicker than it should be. But still this shows you you know you could print very fine things like threads on a bolt and they can be much smaller than this obviously. So we got a couple more models to see here and there are figurines so this is a soldier with a gun. See how close I can get here guys but can see how great the detail is it's just astonishing and this printer does an excellent job and how the layers sit now this had a lot of supports coming from the bottom so there's 
little bit of a rough spots here on the back but it still turned out pretty good you know with a little bit more time with processing it it would look much nicer but yeah as far as the details very nice and you guys can see even the gun here has a pretty small end and printed perfectly there yeah i was very happy to see this print here and then for the last print here we have a trooper looking guy also a very tiny print and you guys can see the detail in this gun here very good and precise and also turned out great overall so there was quite a bit of support to take off but as far as details go and even here on this cape turned out great i did stick this little sticker here on the bottom just so he can stand but yeah overall you guys can see that you know a printer like this is great for printing figurines like this one here all right guys so let's go through the cleaning process real quick so we're going to disconnect the bill plate and just put it here so you will need some kind of area to clean now with the old resin you know obviously you want to save it for next time but what you want to do is you want to grab your bottle and then use a filter and grab the tub with the extra resin and pour it through the filter and the reason you want to do this is because just in case there's anything in the tub you're not going to contaminate the rest of your resin so i didn't have too much left over now all we have left in there is just a thin film of resin and so there's a couple of ways you can get rid of it you can you know just put alcohol in it and clean it and that's usually what i do but you can also set it back in the printer let's get these out of the way close this back up if we go to tools and then we go to clean vat here it's going to run it for 15 seconds the ultraviolet lights and cure the resin that's left over in the tub i'm going to bump this up to 30 seconds because i know it's probably going to need more than that we'll click next and so it's just going to blast the whole tub with the UV rays and that's going to solidify whatever resin is in there. And that just makes it a lot easier to clean it up. All right, it's 30 seconds past. Let's see if that was enough or not. All right, so it's pretty good. We can see something solidified, but I can still see some running. So I'm going to run it for another 15 seconds. So that should technically be good i can still see a little bit of running and that's you know things in the crevices but the overall resin that was in the middle is hardened up and now we can grab our plastic spatula and kind of pry it off here and it's going to come out kind of like one sheet which is kind of cool and now you can just toss this away and so now we only have a little bit to clean in the tub compared to you know trying to soak all this up but yeah it's pretty straightforward i'm just going to use alcohol and clean out the parts this brush comes in handy for cleaning also so the tub is clean clean off our build plate so now this is clean and that's pretty much it so yeah not too hard to clean up just you know again with the smells alcohol is pretty strong so good ventilating area is quite important all right guys so the ldh here seems to definitely be a very nice resin printer and one of the things i do like creality overall is that when they release a product usually it's pretty polished and thought through and more of a quality component compared to others on the market so i feel like with everything you get with this machine it's worth every penny you know especially when it's competing with the similar cheaper printers out there this really becomes a no-brainer and one of the things that really stand out to me is the carbon filter that it has built in however it works whenever the lid is closed and it's printing there's practically no smell coming out of it so whatever it's doing to control that it's doing an excellent job and you really notice it when you pop the lid open and how all the smells start coming out so i'm definitely a big fan of that now this printer having the newest technology of the monochrome screen really puts this thing in another league. So that is the future of resin printing going forward because your printing time is cut down dramatically with this type screens that they're using now. And with resin printers, it seems like we got to the point where pretty much every resin printer can do the 0.05 microns resolution and they all pretty much look similar. Now, some of them have a better way of controlling, you know, how the light cures the resin. And you can see that in the more expensive printers. But in the budget section of printers, you know, you can only get so good. And I really think that for resin LCD printing, you know, this is as good as it gets at the moment with where we are today. So even though with resin printing, we get much better detail in our print you know there's still that aspect of the alcohol the cleaning process and that's one thing i want to mention if you're going to get into resin printing you probably want to get yourself a cleaning station so that's probably going to cost you almost as much as the printer itself but it's worthwhile to have that because it makes the whole process more easier and enjoyable and not only that you're going to get better print quality with that kind of processing you know compared to you know cleaning them with a brush and rubbing them things like that so and also as you saw if you put it straight in the sun you're going to get burned so so I think Creality did a great job with this printer and they designed it to have everything you would want and need in a 
desktop resin printer. The build construction is excellent. All the parts are high quality. The monochrome display takes this printer to the next level with only one to four seconds per layer, which is quite astounding. So no more waiting a long time for a print to finish. So I think resin printing would be great for anybody that does figurines, more miniature kind of things, because you really get that extra detail that you cannot get in a normal FDM printer. Now, as far as the whole process goes, FDM printer is still more easier and enjoyable process process but with resin here you have to you know take in consideration the smells the ventilation the post processing the chemicals involved the safety aspects of all that but then again depends on what you're looking for but with that said I think reality here hits it out of the park and I think this printer here at reasonable prices will really do better over the popular options today so if you're interested in the LDH then I'm gonna have some links in the description check it out and if you enjoyed this video then hit that like button and also stay tuned for more videos I got more 3d printers coming up also check out my pretty long playlist with the printers i already reviewed you might find something interesting there so as always guys thanks for watching and i'll see you on the next one peace